Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we continue speaking about articles. This is the second video in my series of videos about the articles in the English language. The previous one was an introductory video. There we talked about the concept of articles, we discussed what articles there are in English and what functions do they perform, why do we need articles. In today's lesson we are going to talk about the indefinite article, which is a or an. Without further ado, let us begin. What is the indefinite article a? When do we use it? The indefinite article a or an refers to an object or to a person in general. We use the indefinite article with singular nouns when our interlocutor doesn't know exactly which one we are talking about. A singular common noun always requires a or an. This is an important thing to remember. Once again, a singular common noun always requires a or an. So there won't be any situation in the English language where you have a countable singular common noun without any article. That will be either a or the or something that takes the place of this article. That can be a determiner, a numeral or a pronoun, for instance, but this place before such a noun cannot be empty. Examples of such singular common nouns would be a notebook, a pilot, an idea or an essay. Let's look at some sentences. I've bought a notebook. It's a nice little notebook. James is a good pilot. Eva used to work as a pilot. I have an idea. What a clever idea! We are to write an essay for the next class. What do we see in all of these sentences? We see that our nouns all are singular common nouns and they are used with the article a or an. The choice between a or an depends on the following letter, on the letter with which the noun that follows this article starts. Please note, though, that the article a or an, that is the indefinite article, cannot be used with plural nouns. So you cannot say a notebooks. You can only say a notebook or notebooks. For instance, I've bought a notebook. I like buying notebooks. Or you can also say I bought some notebooks yesterday. In this case, the place of the article is taken by some. So please know that if you already have something in front of your noun, a determiner, a numeral or a pronoun, like in this case, you do not put any articles before them. So you should not say I bought the some or a some notebooks. That would be a mistake. As I have already mentioned, the indefinite article has two variants. A and N. A is used with the words that start with a consonant or with a vowel that has a consonant sound. N is used before the words beginning with the vowel sound. Let me demonstrate. A magpie, a car, a hare, a university, but an eagle, an automobile, an air, an umbrella. In this first column, the sounds m are consonant. The last word, university, though it has a vowel, letter u, the sound is consonant. It's y. It's not a, like in the word utterance, for instance. There, the same letter u produces a vowel sound. In this word, university is a consonant sound y. So we say a university, no an university is needed. But in the second column we say an eagle, an automobile, an air, an umbrella, because our nouns start with vowel sounds. E or O or like in the third case air, the letter H is not read. And this is what's important, not what you write, but what you pronounce. 
if the letter H is not pronounced in this word and it starts with the sound E, then we need the article N, not E. An herb might be another example of such a situation. Let's continue. Please note that when the article and the noun are separated by an adjective, the article that agrees with the initial sound of the adjective is used. That's why we say an English breakfast, an easy task, an interesting question, but a tasty orange, a new automobile, a wide branching oak. Though the first three nouns breakfast, task, and question start with consonant sounds. The adjectives that precede them start with vowel sounds. And what we are going to do is we are going to agree our article with this first sound that follows it. Thus, we should say N English. And it doesn't matter that the word breakfast has a consonant sound, okay? Let's now look at some sentences in which Nouns are used with the indefinite article E or N. We have an apple tree in our backyard. Our neighbor has apple trees in their garden. We introduce some new piece of information. Our interlocutor doesn't know yet anything about what we are going to tell him, right? He or she doesn't know anything about this apple tree. So it's only logical that we introduce it with the article N. We use N because we have the word apple that starts with the vowel sound E. In the second case, our neighbor has apple trees in their garden. Though this is a new piece of information, we are not going to use any E or N. Why? Because the noun is in plural, it's trees. So the first mentioning of something which is in plural means that we are going to use the so-called zero article. I talked briefly about the zero article in this introductory video. If you need to remind yourselves of what it is, please rewatch this video. Another couple of examples. This is a windmill. These are windmills. The same. We introduce something to the person we are talking to. This is a windmill. Windmill is a common, countable, singular noun, right? So we say, this is a windmill. But if we want to speak about something which is plural, we are not going to use the indefinite article a or an. We are going to use the zero article. These are windmills. Have you ever seen a bald eagle? Eagle is a countable singular noun. Usually when we speak about something theoretically, um, we use the indefinite article. So have you ever seen a bald eagle? Michael is a mechanic. When introducing professions of people, we also use the article a or an, the indefinite article. A donkey can carry heavy loads. Such animal, that is called a donkey, can carry heavy loads. Here we are talking about a representative of a group, yeah, of a kind of animals. And thus we use a. We'll talk about it later. And the last example, give me a pencil, please. Any pencil, right? Give me this thing which is called a pencil. So with the help of these examples, I just wanted to make you acquainted with different cases, uh, different types of sentences in which we see our nouns used with the indefinite article a. Now I suggest that we go through all the functions of this article one by one. The indefinite article a or n can be used in six different functions. They are the classifying function, the indefinitizing function, the introductory function, the generic function, the quantifying function, and finally the aspective function. Let's start with the first one, with the classifying function. This function is realized in classifying utterances. What can be called a classifying utterance? Any kind of sentence that classifies something or introduces 
some information that classifies something. Let's see. So first of all, these are structures with a verb to be. For instance, this is a tree. Michael is a military man. It was a mistake. Then these are exclamatory sentences. Exclamatory sentences that begin with what and such. For instance, what a beautiful garden. Richard is such a clever dog. And finally, these are sentences that contain an adverbial modifier of manner or comparison. For instance, you look like a movie star or don't behave like a fool or Jane works as a costume designer. Memorize these structures. So in all of these structures that are introduced here, you will have the indefinite article a because they function as classifying sentences. We always say this is a tree, dog, door, house, road, whatever. The only thing that you should remember is that your noun must be singular common noun, okay? If it is singular common noun, you will have a, this is a, he is a, she is a, it was a, and so on. In these exclamatory sentences that start with what and such, if we are talking about a singular common noun, we will always have a. What a beautiful garden, what a wonderful day, what a powerful computer, and so on. If you have a noun in plural, of course, you will not use a. That's clear, right? And the last structure is this structure that contains a comparison. You look like a movie star. So we compare somebody or something to somebody or something. And again, the important thing to remember is that the noun must be a singular common noun. You look like a movie star. Otherwise, no article will be used. For instance, they look like movie stars. In your language, you might not have any articles or articles might be used differently, not in such structures. They may perform different functions. But in English, what you see now on your screens is something that you are to drill, to memorize, okay? In these sentences, you will always see a or an. If, of course, we are dealing with singular common nouns. The next function of the indefinite article is the indefinitizing function. This function of a or an is realized when the referent of the noun is not a real thing, but something that exists in the speaker's imagination only. Your first question might be, what is a referent of the noun? A referent is what the noun stands for. We have a word, a noun, yeah, which is a combination of letters which we read in a particular way, according to the rules. What these letters stand for, what they actually symbolize, is the referent of the noun. For instance, we have the word pine. These four letters, P-I-N-E, stand for an evergreen tree with long needles. In this case, the referent of the noun pine is pretty clear, right? But in some other cases, it might be very difficult to explain what a noun is. For instance, as a reference of such nouns as happiness, or war, or sobriety, and other abstract ideas. So let's return to our rule. So when the referent of the noun is not a real thing, like a pine in the sentence, this is a pine, but something that exists in the speaker's imagination, we are going to use the article a or an. This function is called indefinitizing, because we are not talking about some definite thing, a pine tree that grows outside, but about the concept of a pine tree. These normally happens in the sentences of the subjunctive mood or in interrogative or negative sentences when we are speaking about something in theory, but not about something that we describe in this reality that exists in front of us, okay? Let's see. 
I wish I had a dog. This sentence is in the subjunctive mood. I don't have a dog, but I wish I had a dog. So I'm talking about something that I only imagine. The referent of the noun is in my imagination. I'm not talking about some real dog. I'm talking about something which I consider to be a dog. Okay? If only we could find a place to live. Again, this sentence is not in the indicative mood. We are not speaking about something that we already have or we see in front of our eyes. We speak about something imaginary. A place to live. One day I'll have a car and said. The indefinitizing function of the indefinite article a is also realized in some future tenses. I haven't had something yet, but I think that I will someday, but probably I will not. Again, we are not speaking about something that we already have. We speak about something that we imagine, that we hope we will have in some days to come. One day I'll have a car, a thing, which might be called a car. We'll probably rent a motorhome for our holiday next summer. Again, this motorhome exists in our imagination only. Jane says she doesn't want a pool in her garden. She doesn't want something which is called a pool. Yeah, It exists in her head, but it's not in, in her garden yet. And uh, she doesn't speak about some particular pool, yeah, just a concept of a pool. The referent of the noun pool here exists only in our speaker's imagination. Have you ever seen a lion, an animal which is called a lion, yeah? Have you ever seen, uh, pay attention, such questions like, have you ever seen, have you ever eaten, have you ever tried? Um, those questions about your experience. They are good illustrations to this function of the indefinite article. Because here we speak about something which exists in our imagination, but not about particular lion, a particular thing. Yeah? When you ask somebody, have you ever tried a chicken soup, for instance? You are not talking about a particular bowl of soup. You are talking about imaginary soup that you imagine in your head. The next function of the indefinite article a is the introductory function. This function is realized when we introduce an object to our interlocutor for the first time. Once upon a time there lived a king. He had a daughter whom he loved very much. This might be a sentence from a fairy tale, and fairy tales are good illustrations of this function. We introduce something to our reader, yeah, there lived a king, or there lived a princess, and so on. This is a new piece of information, and if the noun that we are dealing with is a countable uh, singular common noun, of course, we are going to use a or an. Another example, in the middle of the hall, there was a table surrounded by six chairs. Here we describe a room and introduce a new piece of information to our readers or listeners. There was a table. The carpenter lived in a tiny house between the forest and the river. A tiny house is a new piece of information which is introduced and behind the house there was a barn. A barn is this new piece of information that we introduce with the help of the article a. The next function of the indefinite article is the generic function. This function implies that what we say about one representative of a class or a group of objects or living beings can also be said about other representatives of this class or group. For instance, an oak is a deciduous tree. This can absolutely be said about any oak, because all oaks lose their leaves in autumn. A trumpet is a musical instrument. Again, all trumpets are musical instruments. A wombat is a marsupial. All wombats are marsupials. An orca is a cetacean. All orcas are representatives of these class of animals. A tanker is a cargo ship for transporting liquids and gases. Any tanker is a ship for transporting liquids and gases. A bungalow is a small house that usually has one story. This can absolutely be said about 
any bungalow. Please note that in all of these cases we are talking about singular concrete nouns. If our nouns are not singular or they are abstract, we will not use a. For instance, silk is a natural fiber produced by silkworms. Silk is a material, right? So we cannot use a or an in front of it. Ice is water that is frozen into a solid state. Ice is a mess now. No indefinite article, just ice. Ice is water that is frozen. The next function of the indefinite article a is the quantifying function. In this function, the indefinite article a preserves its original meaning of one. A is actually one. For instance, they met once a year. Wait a minute, please. I'll change my jacket. She bought a pound of rice. It's been an hour since Mike left. It's time he were back. Are you sure a gallon of milk is enough? The image was gone in a blink of an eye. Not a word was said about that occasion. And a stitch in time saves nine. The last sentence is a proverb. And this quantifying function is quite common in proverbs. Let's memorize some phrases and some cases in which we have this idea of oneness, where article a means one. For instance, we say a dozen, a hundred, a thousand, a million, a score, a minute, a moment, a mile, a kilogram, a spoonful, a handful, and so on and so forth. Another case where this idea of oneness may occur is after the negative not. For instance, not a word, not a sound, not a trace, not a thought, not a chance, not a clue, not a whisper, not a flicker, not a tear, not a sign, not a look, not a spark, etc. These phrases suggest complete absence of something. We use them for intensification, yeah? we use them to stress this absence. And another case when the idea of oneness is expressed by a or an is in some set phrases that you are to memorize. For instance, one at a time, at a draught, at a glance, in a split second, in a nutshell, at a pinch, in a rush, in a fit of laughter or rage or anger, for instance, and so on and so forth. Please note that mass nouns are normally used with the zero article. We wouldn't say a rice is good for your health, right? We would say rice is good for your health. But sometimes a or an can be used with these nouns. And it happens in this particular function in the quantifying function, when a or a means one. We say coffee is my favorite drink for breakfast, but I'd like a coffee and a donut, please. A coffee means one drink, one portion of coffee. She's got such beautiful hair, but I found a hair in my soup. I hope that's clear and we can move to the last function, of the indefinite article a. This function is called the aspective function. And this is one of the trickiest functions of this article. This function of a or a is realized when the indefinite article is used before an abstract noun and serves to bring out a special aspect of the notion expressed by this noun. For instance, it was a fear he had never experienced before. Fear is an abstract noun, and normally we would not use anything in front of it, or as grammarians say, we would use the zero article. But here we use a. We want to stress that that was a very particular fear, a very specific, something that our subject had never experienced before. Another example, she felt a joy that seemed to give her wings. So you might ask, okay, how do I know if I should use a in front of an abstract noun. Usually in those cases where we use a in front of abstract nouns, these abstract nouns are followed either by a subordinate clause that describes them or they have descriptive attributes. Let's look at some other examples. Uh, these nouns, as I have just mentioned, are often modified by an attribute. She smiled at me with a curious tenderness. He talked with a certain impatience in his voice. The eccentric professor had a peculiar interest in mosses. Alan displayed a profound admiration of his math teacher. After interning at the nonprofit, 
Laura felt a strong passion for community service. Curious, certain, peculiar, profound, strong, these are all descriptive attributes that precede our nouns and thus stimulate us to use this indefinite article. Let's look at more examples where the indefinite article performs the aspective function. Jessica developed a strong affection for the artwork. Michael expressed a profound gratitude for their support. Anne experienced a terrible nostalgia when she visited her hometown. Simon could feel a brutal coldness in the way the old man looked at him. Sally has always had an insatiable thirst for knowledge. Amanda felt a deep regret when she thought about certain moments of her life. James had a patience that always amazed his wife. Helen had a beauty that took your breath away. Timothy had a charm that lingered long after he was gone. As you see, the first six sentences have these descriptive attributes, while the last three have subordinate clauses that describe our nouns. A patience that always amazed his wife, or a beauty that took your breath away, and so on. If we don't have any subordinate clause that describes our noun, or any descriptive attribute before our noun, whether we use the uh, indefinite article before our abstract noun, or we don't use it, depends on what actually we want to express. If we want to put additional stress, we do put the article a before our noun. If we don't want that stress there, we don't use the indefinite article before the abstract noun that we use. But I want to stress that again, if we do have that descriptive subordinate clause or we do have a descriptive attribute, the use of the indefinite article is obligatory. Now I invite you to have a little bit of practice. Let's together try to explain why in each of the following sentences the indefinite article a or an is used. Let's also pinpoint the function which this article performs in each of the sentences. So let's start the first sentence. Jason is a very diligent person. The article a introduces the noun person. Person is a singular countable noun. It is mentioned for the first time. That is why we say this is a very diligent person. And the function the article a performs here is the classifying function. If you remember, this is one of the structures that introduce those classifying utterances. Jason is a person. Jason is a very diligent person. The next sentence. A pilgrim is someone who is traveling to a holy place. A Pilgrim. Again, pilgrim is a singular countable noun. Here, the article a is used in its generic function because a pilgrim here is a representative of a class of people or a group of people. And we can say that any pilgrim is a person who travels to a holy place or all pilgrims travel to holy places. Right? I had a coffee in that cafe yesterday. By a coffee, we mean a portion of coffee, one drink. Here we'll speak about both the introductory and the quantifying functions of the article a because we mean one coffee and also we introduce a new something. Our interlocutor only gets to know that we had a coffee, this drink, yes? She saw a hole in her sweater. Whole is our noun, it is singular, it is countable, and the article a here introduces a new piece of information to our interlocutor. She saw a what? A hole, not a spot, not a tear, but a hole. Not a word was spoken until they reached Tom's house. Not a word. It's one of those negative expressions in which the article a performs the quantifying function, not a word. Basically means not one word. If you're hungry, there is a sandwich on the kitchen table. A sandwich. Sandwich is a singular countable noun. Thus, the article a is used and the function that it performs here is the introductory function. There is a sandwich. Again, this is one of those structures in which we always use 
the article a unless we are talking about abstract nouns or nouns in plural and so on a headache is a pain or ache in your head especially one that lasts longer than a few minutes this sentence is very similar to number two the article a here performs its generic function and we can say that any headache is a pain or ache in your head thus we speak about one representative of this class of pains alice asked for a family trip to disneyland for her birthday a family trip the noun trip is a singular countable noun and the article a performs here its introductory function she asked for what for something that is a family trip i have never seen a firefly firefly is a little insect it is a countable singular noun and what do we see here we see the indefinitizing function because the referent of our noun exists only in the imagination of our speaker i have never seen a firefly i speak about a concept not about a real bug i've bought new glasses and a lazy susan for our friday party glasses is in plural so we don't need a here we're gonna use what is called the zero article in plain english it's nothing right we want to use anything in front of the word glasses but lazy susan is a countable singular noun this is a lazy susan if you don't know this word so we say a lazy susan why because we introduce a new piece of information a new object to our interlocutor so the article a performs here the introductory function a mysterious happiness appeared on Anne's face hmm? what do we have here as happiness is an abstract noun obviously we're talking about the aspective function we have a descriptive attribute mysterious which makes it necessary to use the article a a mysterious happiness and the last sentence what a wonderful coincidence that's an exclamatory sentence that starts with what and in such sentences if we have a singular countable noun we are going to use a or n in this case it's a because wonderful starts with a consonant sound w. I hope my explanations were clear and you don't have any doubts about any of the uses of the article and these sentences. If you do have any questions about the indefinite article, please leave them in the comment section down below. The definite article there will be the topic of our next video. This is all for today. I hope you liked today's video. If you find what I'm doing here on this channel useful, please consider supporting me. Subscribe to this channel in order not to miss my new lessons and see you in the next video.